do a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I know in Seattle, this, this executive uh, who owns a multi-millionaire, multi-million dollar company, and he told me he's hired thousands and fired thousands, and he said he can tell a new hire right away how they will do based upon if they, here are his three criteria. One, see this is the job description right here, okay. There are those who do just enough not to get fired. You know, you can't really fire them, they're late maybe once or twice a month. They just do enough, they can't let them go. But he's never gonna count on them. And then there's the big group that does the job requirement and nothing more. They come in, they show up, they leave. And then there is that little special group that does the job requirement and a little bit more. That little bit more might be making a suggestion at work. I think this would work better. It might be staying an extra half an hour to finish up what you're working on, but you're not going to put in for it and say, I need that. I want my paycheck raised. I worked a half an hour last week. Whatever it is, it's one little bit more that makes the most gigantic difference. When I got finished with my education at the University of Minnesota, and after I, you know, the, the guy heard me on the radio when I went to graduate school, and then I was in Seattle, and I got hired to do a local news reporting. That's a tough gig, because one, it's the news, and so you can't make a mistake. I mean, people are counting on it. It's the news. You have to get it right, you have to spell the names right, you have to say what happened, you can't say, you know, you know, the mayor said something like this today. No, it has to be accurate, accurate quotes, and I was totally stressed out. The other thing is, it was really hard to get on, because everybody's competing and all trying to get on the air. And I learned that the only way to get on would be to volunteer for all those assignments nobody else wanted. Anybody going to work uh, night shift? Anybody want to work 4th of July? Anybody want to work Christmas? You know, what I was always doing that little bit. And, and it counted because pretty soon my face was on. Pretty soon people started to recognize that voice. That's Hattie Poppin. Because I was always volunteering. One reporter got so sick of me doing that, she said, Hattie, you would cover the rats having a meeting in the sewer at midnight. <laughs> she, she was bad. She was getting on. But the results that come from that, I could not have predicted. One night, the overnight anchor person, there was a 6 a.m. show that was on before the Today Show. It had one anchor person and one reporter. They both started at midnight. It was a terrible shift. Nobody wanted it, but of course, people wanted to be on, so he, the guy who took it as an anchor, he gets an anchor, so of course he took it. The poor reporter took it just on the chance that he might call in sick someday, and then she gets in the anchor chair and anchor. So those two had to go. But one day, she called in sick, and not realizing he called in sick. So it's the middle of the night. The producer's got a show coming up in three hours. Who's he going to call? Ghostbusters music. <laughs> Who's he going to call? The person who's always willing to work. And so they called me. The telephone rang at 2 in the morning. Can you anchor the news? Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't know how. Can you read teleprompter? Uh -huh. I didn't really know what your teleprompter is. The, the words go past the screen, and you have to act like you're not reading them as they go by. You, know? you have to just talk with your eyes are doing this this way. Um, and I, I said, yeah, I can do it. And I did it. And within a year, I was the, the anchor person of the weekend news. I couldn't have predicted that. And, and, and I, I don't sound like I'm breaking because it's not about what I learned is it's not about me. Every time you do that little bit extra, it's about all of them. It's about all of us. Because when somebody does a little bit extra, it's not just a little bit extra at work or at school. If you do a little bit extra there, it becomes a little bit extra in life, in the community, in the tribe, in the state, in the country. A little bit extra saved my life once. I was 50 and I made the stupidest decision 
but I thought it was the smartest decision. I was sitting in high school in Seattle, and I thought, this is white man's education, and I'm Indian, what am I doing here? And I should just quit, and I should go climb the, the wall and take over Fort Lawton. You know, it was too late, Alcatraz, and someone had already taken over, but, I'm like, <laughs> but they were going to take over Fort Lawton. Anyway, I thought, I'm just going to quit, I quit, I quit, I quit. And I walked out, and just one day, just like that, just from a little thinking to an action, just like that. And thank God that that very next day, a Native American leader named Bernie White there happened to visit the Kaufman household. He was one of those community leaders who would go around and just check on Native families in the city, how you doing, you need anything, and you can do it going well. He was coming to talk to my parents. And I saw him, and I came bounding down the steps, and I said, hey, Bernie, I dropped out of school. And I was expecting a high five, because I thought, I'm doing the Indian thing. And he stopped me in my tracks, and he said, Hattie, we don't need more Indian dropouts. We need more Indian graduates. Congratulations to you. Thank you for having me.